Mitch McConnell's to-do list has exactly one thing on it in big, bold font. Hold on to power at any cost. COVID-19 cases are rising and our economy is on the brink of collapse, but Mitch McConnell refuses to pass a stimulus package because relief for American families isn't on his list. Instead, he's rammed through a Supreme Court confirmation in the middle of an election. Now, here are five things that every American needs to know about it. Number one, why this confirmation is good timing for Republicans who want to tear down the Affordable Care Act. On November 10th, the Supreme Court will hear arguments on whether the Affordable Care Act should be overturned. Republicans already tried to repeal and replace Obamacare in Congress, but they failed. So now they're trying to get it done in the Supreme Court. Nominating a Supreme Court justice who will likely side against the ACA is the last gasp of a right-wing billionaire-fueled party that can't enact its extremist agenda in a democratic way, so they're stacking the court instead. And it's not just healthcare that's on the line. It's also Roe versus Wade, the right to join a union, protection for dreamers, and the fight to be in America where no one is discriminated against because of the color of their skin, because of how they worship, or because of who they love. Number two, how Senate Republicans cheated. In 2016, Senate Republicans blocked President Obama's Supreme Court nominee, claiming, oh, it was too close to an election. Let's let the American people decide. The Senate will appropriately revisit the matter when it considers the qualifications of the nominee the next president nominates. President Obama had a year left on his term. Meanwhile, Amy Coney Barrett was confirmed just eight days before the end of the election, after millions of people had already voted. In 2016, Mitch McConnell made up a rule to benefit his party, and then he turned around and shamelessly discarded that rule in 2020. Time and again, he takes the rule of law and just throws it in the garbage. And his Republican colleagues follow him straight into the dumpster. When those in power change the rules to benefit themselves, they're playing the game of tyrants. Three, how the confirmation hearings were a sham. The nominee spent days ducking and weaving around questions that frankly should have been pretty uncontroversial. She refused to say whether it's wrong to separate children from their parents in order to try to deter immigration. A matter of hot political debate in which I can't express a view or be drawn into as a judge. She refused to say whether climate change is happening. I will not express a view on a matter of public policy, especially one that is politically controversial. She even refused to say that a president should commit to a peaceful transfer of power. To the extent that this is a political controversy right now, as a judge, I want to stay out of it. This was no democratic hearing. This was a puppet show where the Federalist Society was pulling the strings. And what is the Federalist Society, you might ask? Well, that brings me to number four. Why this nomination is a win for dark money. Imagine a spider web of dark money. The Federalist Society is basically right at the center of it, with other groups like Judicial Crisis Network. In just a few decades, they have gotten very powerful, raising millions of dollars to fund law schools and to train conservative lawyers, think tanks to promote their big business agenda, and lobbyists to influence public opinion. Who funds these groups? Billionaires who stand to benefit from conservative judges. People like Joseph Coors, the Koch brothers, and Robert Mercer. People who want to be accountable to no one. The rich and powerful pour money into winning the presidency and Congress, but a lesser known fact is they pour money into our courts as well. The Federalist Society supported the nominations of Gorsuch, Kavanaugh, and Barry. Clearly, their decades-long investment paid off. 
they now have a judiciary tilted toward corporate power. And it's not just the Supreme Court. Trump and Mitch McConnell have rammed through a record number of judges. Why? To have them serve lifetime appointments in the circuit courts as well. And lastly, number five, why this nomination doesn't reflect the views of the majority of our people. Amy Coney Barrett, along with Neil Gorsuch and Brett Kavanaugh, were appointed by a president who lost the popular vote and confirmed by a Republican Senate majority that represents less than half of all Americans. So if you do the math, millions of Americans are silenced in the halls of power. Corrupt Republican leadership is numb to its own hypocrisy, and it doesn't reflect the views of the majority or the values that we hold dear. That is the bad news. But here is the good news. This election, we tell them we're watching. We've seen what they've done to our democracy, and we're fighting back. And look, I get it. These fights are hard, and at times it can feel hopeless. But remember, hope is not given to us. Hope is created by us. So we can't give in to fear, and we can't back down, because the side that is undermining our democracy wants you to despair. So I urge you, dig a little deeper. There has never been a more righteous time to get in this fight. The White House, the Senate, the House, and every single state and local election matters in protecting the values we share. Vote, 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 and organize your community to vote. Our democracy depends on you staying in this fight.